Assalamu alaikum all of you. In today's video, we will see how to work out the wind loads or structure members due to the, of course, wind action. Um, now, we will need to divide this tutorial into several videos because rather it will be too long. And we are going to go through a practical example, solving it by hand, and then afterwards we will be comparing our results with the results obtained by a program called Tecla Tets. For those who don't know the Tecla Tets, it's an engineering program. It's used for the analysis and design of um, structure members. Uh, it is very simple and very helpful. So uh, all of this will be as part two of the PS6399, loading for buildings. So let's get started. Here's our proposed in the support of frame made of steel. Now indeed, we really don't care about the material used for the, for, for, for the I mean, for the, for the structure, for the construction. We don't really care that much whether it's made of steel or RCC or even timber because we are not going to design it. We only need to determine the wind load on it. So it is proposed to be constructed in the city of Masqat, that's the capital city of Oman. Uh, now there are certain parameters we need to know about and must be either given or assumed. For instance, if you just check this example, you see that the distance away from the closest C is given. If it's not given, you can't really uh, figure it out. It's very, very easy. What you need is just the Google Maps and then, uh, in fact, I have the link here in this video. I'm going to open it up and show you how to do it. It's very simple. And also you need to know the altitude of the construction site above the main sea level. And again, this is something very simple. You just can Google it and you get plenty of maps telling you, um, well, depending on your region. So um, you can assume it, but in fact, it's very easy to find it out. Uh, also, you need the geometry of the building. Now, I have the width, I have the length, uh, everything else. You don't really need all the details, but some dimensions, you can really need them. Uh, otherwise, you will not be able to progress the um, calculation um, of the wind action. All right. Now, I'm not going really to start solving this example until I make sure that you have uh, a proper introduction or general definition of, well, whether uh, the characteristics of wind action or um, some some definitions regarding the code, but we are, the code we are using. That's the BS6399 part two. First of all, if you have this building right here, they are what's called the fixed dimensions. So we have the height, we have the length, and we have the width. And no matter what kind of direction we are facing the wind, these will remain constant. These are fixed. So we have the length, the width, and the height. Now, when I say fixed dimensions, uh, probably there must be variable dimensions. And that's true. We have the variable dimensions because we are dealing with wind. No, nobody can, in fact, predict the time it hits or where it can um, hit the building. So we have the variable dimensions. Again, this is the spare, uh, figure two of the code. We have what's called the crosswind breadth, and we have the inwind depth. That's the B and D. What do I mean? Suppose that we have the wind blowing up as shown for this building. Now let's keep the fixed dimension there as a reference. Now B is simply uh, as as by the by the definition, it's normal to the wind direction. So B will be, in this case, equal to the L. So B, the value of B will be equal to L. That's always perpendicular to the wind direction. And the in wind depth, that's the D, will be always parallel to the wind direction. So the value of D will be equal to W. Now if I change the direction of the wind, as you may have uh, guessed it, the B will be, in this case, equal to w and then the d will be equal to l so always the d is parallel to the wind direction b is 
perpendicular to the wind direction. And this is true for the standard method that we are adopting right now in this video. We use the orthogonal uh, directions. So it's 0 degree and 90 degree. All right. So we have this building again, and we have the plan of the building. Suppose the wind hits, like, shown here. Um, the front side of the building is called the wind ward wall or um, side. And the rear side, the one you see, the, the back side, where the wind lifts the building is called the leeward side. If we take the plan of a building, um, as I said, we have two cases. We have two wind directions. We have the zero wind direction and we have the 90 degree wind direction. Again, this is as per the standard method that we are adapting right now for this problem uh, by the code. And uh, you might tell that it pretty much covers all of the cases because the wind blowing up in this direction is similar when it blows up in this direction and the same thing happens to the wind uh, direction at 90 degree all right so zero degree and 90 degree all right let's get moved now let's define the internal pressure and external pressure suppose that we have this rectangular um, regular uh, building it has a flat right uh, it has sorry a flat roof and let me first start with the external pressure now when the wind blows up the building from this side first of all we're gonna have a positive pressure here when i say positive pressure that is like it is a pressure it's, it's given like uh, uh, with a positive sign um, generally the roof will be in negative pressure when i say negative pressure i mean a uh, section so it tries to pull the walls outwards so when I, whenever I'm trying to pull the walls uh, inside the building, then I have a positive uh, pressure. When it tries to when it tries to go away from the building, okay, then we have a negative pressure. That is a suction. So this is just the general um, behavior of a building under wind when it, when it hits the building from this direction. Now, if I want it to show it more specifically then um, this is the positive pressure again some areas will be in a uh, higher pressure higher negative pressure than uh, other areas of the roof this is because the wind comes up here and then it probably changes its direction it's like the wind comes here hits the walls and then goes away so it creates a positive um, pressure here and then we have the negative again but the high value of the negative uh, pressure will be just here at the edge okay where the wind changes its direction um, quite rapidly uh, we like creating what's called the turbulence okay and then just the same so this is the flat roof so the case of the f a flat roof what do we have what 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 if we have um, a roof that is not flat so in this case we have this double pitch roof um, now again it's just the same thing the wind blows up here these walls and then to the roof and then the leeward side now the thing is we cannot really um, put it in this way for this side of the roof it can cannot be, uh, really be a negative uh, I mean this is by observation and this is because the angle here is quite big. We have a roof that is too steep. As you see, the roof is too steep. And, well, generally, logically, I mean, you can imagine this. If the load blows up here, then it's like it pushes as well here on, the, on these walls. And then goes with the negative section. So, um... The proper, the more proper way of presenting this is by giving it a positive uh, pressure. So we have a positive pressure here, and it goes like this. Another pos positive pressure there, and then we have the negative. All right. In our example, the roof is not that steep. Actually, it's just seven point something uh, degrees. That's the angle, and 
well the pressure will be as seen again these areas will be in a higher pressure or section sorry uh, more than the rest of the roof as well as uh, as well as uh, this area because again the wind changes the direction here so we have positive negative negative and again negative this is just the external pressure let's talk about the internal pressure uh, for these buildings uh, most of the building all of them we have openings okay so the wind can't get inside and it simply creates another kind of pressure that is called the internal pressure this pressure will be on the uh, interior surfaces okay now um, the pressure can the internal pressure again can be a uh, positive or negative let's uh, let's see the, the two cases first of all let's discuss about the well <clears throat> positive pressure now again if we have a, an opening here and the wind blows up in this direction so the wind can get inside and create this positive pressure so the positive pressure here is just the opposite as the um, external pressure if it points outwards then it's a positive if it points inwards then it has a negative sign uh, let me now change the, uh, the the side of the opening let the side of the opening be uh, at the leeward wall now here the wind blows up so we have positive negative negative but then here will be kind of a uh, vacuum so it will create it will create kind of suction inside the, the the house so we have a negative sign here that's called the suction okay so that depends this is the generally the the, 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 def the definition of the simple cases of the internal pressure all right now we discussed about the external pressure and what's going on inside the building that's the internal pressure uh, we have also the side phase pressure so the wind goes like this it also creates area of pressure on the sides of the building so the wind hits here and this is probably the first area that goes under uh, high pressure then the pressure decreases till it is just the lowest so this side of the building and that side the back side there as the wind doesn't really go just like this from the roof to the leeward it goes also that's the side face of the building so we have we, we we generally have the highest pressure here and then a, a little bit lower then the lowest okay so generally we have the external pressure that's the outside the side uh, windward leeward the roof and what's going on inside the building due to the openings so this is the ps6399 part 2 and it gives two methods we have the standard method the, the one we are going to use it's very simple and conservative widely used and we have the directional method we're not going to discuss about this we're not going to solve it by this method it's very complex but again it's accurate it uh, well with this method we can well calculate the wind pressure uh, at any day at any angle here we just have zero and ninety orthogonal um, cases. All right. So this is our example. Now um, I don't want to make this video too long, and we're gonna pause it here. This part was just an introduction to the wind, uh, wind load, and uh, the code that we are uh, using. So the next part will be uh, we'll jump right away solving this example and. Till then, thank you very much for watching.